everybody, welcome back to the studio, and if it's your first time with us, we're happy to have you. Uh, this is day two of the pottery quarantine challenge, whatever you want to call it, whatever I'm calling it. Uh, I'm going to trim some mugs I made yesterday that I threw on the wheel and give you some tips on how I trim mugs and how I trim pots. These are perfect to trim. I left them out mostly overnight. I was up late last night, and this morning they were ready to go. So we have the twisted tumbler. I'm excited to see the bottom of this. It's going to look really cool. We have the first one we did, which was that sideways stripe. The second one we did, which was this kind of tall, concave, slender mug shape, mug form. The third mug form what we did was, I don't know, what, would, what do you call this? Like belly? I don't even know what you call this kind of a form. But I see this a lot at coffee shops or even like restaurants that serve handmade coffee mugs. Um, it keeps your coffee hot because it's a little bit more narrow at the top. The bottom of this one looks really cool too. So I'm going to trim all four of these differently, talk about the tools that I use, and give you some tips for trimming and tips for trimming pots. Yeah. So the first thing I want to point out when I'm trimming, um, or when anyone's trimming, when you're trimming pots, the rim needs to be level. And so if you're new to throwing pots and you don't cut your rim evenly or if it wasn't even to begin with, then you're going to have a really fun time with an uneven piece. So make sure your rims are level. This one I'm going to trim first. Well, actually, no, this one I care about a lot. I'm going to practice on a different one. These are really fragile. So this one I have uh, has a very thin bottom. And so I'm going to do a simple foot for the first one and we'll build complexity as we go along. I trim on this still. Um, my metal wheel head, it'll rattle. It will actually move pieces across as I'm trying to recenter them. So I use this little wood station still. And I also add some water to do what's called water sealing. That helps it stick. Um, some people will use just water, I and mean, it's crazy. Um, I know an artist, Krista Assad, I went to one of her workshops. Watching her trim was amazing. So a little bit of water. Actually, normally I put it down first. Recenter it. I use my finger as a guide. Actually, I'll do it from this angle. So some people use a pencil to recenter, and then you're marking up your piece. I think that's kind of silly. And so I hold my finger near the piece. And then when it touches my finger at that spot, I push it that way. So I point, let it touch your finger, and then push it that way. And little by little, you'll get better. Now, the trick now is, so how much clay do you need? It's a good question. Um, enough, not too much, just enough. A little bit of extra clay here that I have. I'm gonna take some water first, I'm gonna go like this and just kind of, kind of throw it near the rim of the piece. Let the water kind of go around it. Maybe throw some over here. Just touches it, some capillary action, good. That'll seal it to the wheel. You can do one of these carefully if you want. I have found that if the wheel is dry and it's dusty, that your piece can fly off or skip or move. So what I do is I take a coil, a chunky one like this, roll it out, rip it in half, and I go from both sides at once. So if I'm facing you this way, I go from three o'clock and nine o'clock. Not so much into the piece, because if you go into it, you can warp the rim. In this case, this might even crack if I do that too much. So really it's more, around the piece and then down into the wheel head. So around it, down, whoops, too much water. There we go. Really just keeping it in place, barely touching it. Sometimes your clay might survive if you push it into your clay. This one probably won't. There's also those weird, I shouldn't say weird, there's also kind of throwing pads that have like a, an, like an abrasive material so it can grip on like a, a tooth to it. Those are great. I've seen them being used and we're using them myself, but you have to be a little bit better at trimming because you really can't glue it down. There's also those Griffin 
arm things that kind of hold it with a tripod. I don't prefer that, it's just a lot of work. But if I was gonna upgrade, I might get one of those kind of adhesive pads or like toothy trimming pads for trimming the bottoms of my pieces. All right, so we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna do a simple, a simple round curve, maybe a couple, maybe a spiral, I don't know. There's not much clay here. I know from earlier, talking too much. Let's trim. Double check. It's good. First pass is just to clean up the bottom a little bit. It is colored clay after all. I'm gonna round it. I know I have extra clay here. I could have gotten it off earlier when I threw it, but I know I have extra clay on this curve. So I'm gonna round this a little bit, kind of help match the curvature of the piece. Yeah, it looks better, more professional. Now what's nice about this clay is there are a lot of layers here. I'm gonna take a tool, I'm gonna carve into here a little bit with my loop tool to expose some layers here. Just as a little way to give, give some emphasis to the bottom of this piece here. So this is a good solution. If you don't have a lot of clay at the bottom, I had about maybe a quarter of an inch and I want to make like a tall race foot or nothing. So in this case, I just made it smooth and then I used extra clay that was here at the edges to kind of give a little bit of a dip. Give it some emphasis, give it some, you know, a little bit of character. Also, see a little bit of a, a sharp edge there. See this here is a great way to catch glaze. If I were to dip this whole mug and if I were to glaze this whole mug, the glaze might run, which is okay, but if you leave this a sharp edge here at the bottom, glaze can stop there sometimes and pool in really cool ways. So there's foot number one. I love that rainbow. Now what you can also do besides this kind of like, you know, index finger method for recentering, you do what's called tap centering where you have to hit the piece towards the center. Some people use their whole fist, people use their palm of their hand. But essentially, I don't know if I could do it with this wheel being wet like it is. Maybe I can, we'll see. You take your hand. So timing is everything, although I, I struggled a little bit. You kind of hit the piece towards the center. You hit the mug towards the center at the right time. I practice at all the time in college with a yogurt cup, a full yogurt cup, for about maybe you know half an hour, three or four days. Got really good at it. I don't do it very often because sometimes you can dent your piece, but if you're careful, it's a great way to center your mug for trimming. Danny Messinger, or Messinger, he's a potter on Instagram I follow. He, a little bit of water, he will tap center all of his pieces. And he also uses a sanding pad. So this guy tap centers, and he uses like a little adhesive, you know, toothy pad, and then trims. So the guy can put a piece on, trim it, and take it off without adding any kind of clay. Um, it's cool. The guy's a pro. All right, around the piece, down to the wheel head, around the piece, down to the wheel head. This one, I'll do a simple ring foot for this one. I think I have enough, I think. Yeah. 
So a little bit to clean it up and then a ring foot. So you got spiral. So if you have a flat tool like this and you carve flat into it, that's a lot of surface area your tool can skip or it can actually like gouge into it. If you cut like a groove or a spiral and then come back a second time and even it out, it works a lot better. So how thick should the foot be? Good question. The rule of thumb you should always go by is the thickness of the rim should dictate thickness of the foot. So when you're trimming the foot of a piece, if, if it's a big ball with a really thick rim, then it can have a thicker foot. It should support itself. It should be visually matching to the rim. If it's a very thin, kind of a dainty teapot or a teacup, then it probably has a really fine foot, maybe no foot. So this one is still a little thick for a rim or for a foot. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, I think this one's okay. I think we're done. I just compressed the bottom with my fingers. Spent out some cracks. Bottom's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. More trimmings. I swear, everyone, it's like, pottery's great, it really is, but then when you're working with this colored clay, it's like, multiplies it by about 85,000. So much fun. Look how beautiful that is. Never recycle your trimmings. Like you can soak them down and recycle them, but do not, never wad them up and try to wedge them into clay again because it never works out the same. Um, funny, funny story one time. I'm gonna center this one while I tell you this story. So funny story, when I was in college, um, I didn't know that rule about trimmings, or at least that you shouldn't reuse them. So I trimmed a, a bunch of pieces, or at least a couple pieces. I took all the trimmings and I wadded them all up into like maybe about this much of a piece of clay. Like, I don't know, like the size of a hamburger, but thin, I guess, I don't know, like a, like a mini burrito. I put them in the big clay bin, and then my professor was there that day, and he needed some clay, and he found it. And he was like, hmm, who did this? Bunch of wadded up trimmings, and I was like, definitely wasn't me. So Tyler, lots, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Go skip ahead. Now this one I have to be a little bit careful because when pieces are taller and when there's an overhang and a narrow rim, it's more likely to flip and flop. And so just you know, be aware of that if you have a piece trimming that's taller and definitely more narrow at the bottom. Now this one has a lot of clay at the bottom, so for the foot I'll trim on this mug. I'm gonna trim a raised foot that lifts off the table a little bit, makes it look a little visually lighter. Um, this foot is my favorite kind of foot to trim. So I want to establish first where the ring is going to be and then the extra material. So um, I'm going to take off more of this bottom than you see right now. So I'll make a mark first for the outer edge of my foot. Is that too narrow? That's too narrow. Okay. A little wider. Yeah, it's better. Okay. So it's, it's hard to tell now. Just, just watch. You'll see what happens. Hey, Lucy. Come here. Lucy. It's my dog. All right, so this is the tricky part. So I've already established this ring here. You can see it. And I'm gonna remove all this extra clay, maybe a good half inch or so, down to help raise his foot from the piece. It's harder than it looks sometimes, um, going through a lot of clay like that, and so 
If you trail off like I did, that's okay. You can go back with your tool afterwards and do one of these. You can see it's raising up a little bit, and then I, I always angle the bottom part here a little bit. Sorry, this was a little wobbly. Come on. It's like trying to find a drink holder in a movie theater. Here we go. That's, I guess, a little better. Isn't that nice looking? I don't know if you can see from the angle you're at. Now the last thing, <clears throat> with a raised foot, you want to imagine that you have you know, the curvature of the bottom of your piece, whatever it is, and that you're taking a donut and just slapping it on top. To do that, this part is still too high. I have to lower more of the clay, take away maybe a good quarter inch. Almost there. If this was a bowl, I could have the actual bottom of the bowl curve. This has a flat bottom, so I'm gonna lower this till it's flat. So. Last thing I'll do is I'll knock down the edges a little bit. Even though this is smooth and flat, this can be sharp, and so I knock it down at a 45. Give you a close-up of this one. So you can imagine, this edge hits the foot, goes through, and at the same level, continues on to the bottom of the mug. This is my favorite kind of foot to make. Also, isn't the colored clay really awesome? I love it. Last one. This one is a good amount of clay in the bottom. I'm gonna do a raised foot with a couple of extra bells and whistles, if you will. All right, so before I trim this mug, actually, this is a tumbler. Before I trim this, gotta recenter it real quick. Ready to go. So to trim this one, I'm gonna do one quick swipe at the top, then do a little bit of a raised foot with some designs. Just wait till you see this foot. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna establish the ring I want for the bottom. Love it when that happens. You can see the raised foot taking its shape, so just knock off a little bit of this here. Here's a little tip too. If you glaze your work from like holding the bottom, if you make this foot more kind of concave like this, it gives you a lip to hold onto. First, if the foot's just round and smooth, it's hard to actually glaze the bottom. Now I'm leaving this domed a little bit because I want to do a little bit of a dish. Here we go. That's it. Kind of like that. I'll stamp it right now. JF, right in the center. Hopefully right in the center. So this is day two of the quarantine pottery challenge, if you will, whatever I wind up calling it. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.